talked about the benefits of beans and lentils and chickpeas, but do the benefits remain even when they're powdered? There are a bunch of bean pastas on the market now made from bean powder instead of wheat powder. Uh, does it have the same benefits as whole beans? In terms of blood sugar control, yes. No differences in blood sugar responses were observed between whole beans, pureed beans, and powdered beans. This study, however, failed to show a benefit. They gave people powdered lentils, chickpeas, peas, and did not see any cholesterol benefits, for example, compared to a potato placebo. Now, conceivably, the powdering process may have altered the properties of the fiber, but they were only giving people 100 grams a day, which is less than half a can of beans. And Previous studies that have shown significant cholesterol-lowering benefits tended to use more than that. Uh, another bean powder study also found no cholesterol effect, but they were only giving 15 grams a day. That's just like 15 beans a day. If you do a systematic review of all the randomized, controlled, regular bean studies, significant benefits were found more like up around 130 grams a day. In other words, at least one full serving. If you ever get sick of pulse pastas and beans that are canned and cooked, sprouting is a cheap, effective, and simple tool for improving the nutritional quality of certain legumes. I've fawned over lentil sprouts previously as one of the healthiest snacks, along with kale chips and nori sheets. Uh, anyone can make lentil sprouts at home super easy for pennies, fresh produce year-round on your windowsill. But any way to boost their nutritional quality even higher? Well, as a response to environmental stresses, plants modify their metabolism, and we may be able to take advantage of that to modify the composition and activity of plant foods. For example, plants are subjected to free radicals too, which can damage their DNA just like it damages our DNA. So to reduce excess free radicals, plants can ramp up their antioxidant defenses, which we can then take advantage of when we eat them. So, for instance, as a germination technique for chickpeas, if you irradiate them with gamma rays, you can boost their antioxidant defenses. Um, but if you don't want to bruise banner your chickpeas into whole hummus, how about eliciting the nutritional and antioxidant potential of lentil sprouts with temperature stress instead? Uh, for example, what if you took your sprouts when they were two days old and put them in the fridge for an hour? Then you take them out and let them continue to germinate normally. Would that one hour of cold stress make them more nutritious? Or instead of putting them in the fridge, what if you lived in Phoenix and took them outside for an hour? Here's what happens to a measure of the antioxidant power of lentil sprouts germinated the whole time at room temperature, a slow rise with time. But just that one hour in the fridge on day two, and days later significantly more antioxidant buildup. Same thing for an hour at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. What about then storing them in your fridge? Uh, sprouts are usually consumed fresh. However, to keep them fresh, we usually stick them in the fridge. But there hasn't been any studies about the effects of fridge stores on the nutritional quality of sprouts until now. On days 3 through 6, you can see the phenolic phytonutrient content of sprouted peas decline, but keep them in the fridge, and they go up instead. The same thing with mung bean sprouts, which are the typical bean sprouts, whereas in lentils, no significant difference. Uh, we should still keep them in the fridge to prevent them from spoiling, but the best way to ensure maximum nutrition is to store them at body temperature by eating them.